Hey folks, this is Tron Games, and welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, Grand Cathay and do kind of a getting started guide for Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. And so, we want to examine first in this um, kind of campaign is there's a really important mechanic that Grand Cathay has called Yin and Yang and, and the Harmony um, mechanic and basically if you keep yin and yang equal you can see all of the bonuses there you get decreased construction costs for buildings increased growth you get bonus income from both yin and yang buildings you get improved diplomatic relations control corruption is decreased it's it's just super good to um to balance things in this faction now Doing that is harder in practice um, than than it might sound, but it is a mechanic that you want to make sure you pay very close attention to because, especially in the early game, these bonuses, especially things like growth and the construction cost of buildings, are just huge bonuses. You get way more uh, income from from paying attention to this, so it's really good to to do that. Um, one other mechanic that they've got is called the Wu Sing Compass. So here you've got several different things. Once you select um, one of these options, basically you uh, you can't change it. I think it's for eight to ten turns, and you're kind of locked into that. Early on, really good to either select this one or this one. I tend to just about always go this one because I don't tend to. Um, struggle with enemies so select that incre get increased growth get some additional income uh, and we get kind of bonus winds of magic so we've selected something there there is also a mechanic called the ivory road so what you can do is you can send out a caravan to different locations from uh, Nangao and you can pick these different locations to provide uh, additional income so if you're um, faction makes it all the way there and usually it takes about six uh, six to eight turns for most of these you could select different uh, different factions so I'm actually going to you know really go for it here and I'm gonna put a thousand dollars into this because early on if I can get there I can get basically my uh, my return on investment is really really quite high if the caravan survives so we'll send that to uh, Karaza Karak here and let's dispatch that right away. So that's a good thing to to do at the beginning. You can see the army is spawned here. You can't actually control this um, this army but that that group will continue trying to make their way to Karaza Karak uh, as they go. And you're also going to want to make sure that you uh, start things off here by taking your home province. So, Gunpowder Road here has Nan Gao, which is a really strong um, starting location. You want to take Nan Li kind of as quickly as you can. So, I would recommend fighting this um, manually if you can, but you can auto resolve this and uh, kind of go ahead. You can get some replenishment, some additional money. I'm just going to take the replenishment for now. Normally I would take money there though. And here we have Pyrrhic Victory and we're going to lose a few uh, groups here. The problem is, is that we're using, we're going to lose groups that are all related to Yang. If you fight this manually that that won't uh, won't likely happen but we'll go ahead and do that. And then here we'll loot and occupy just for a little bit of additional money. And now we've kind of locked up our um, our home province here. This, uh, these units here are quite good early on. Um, you could actually rebuild this building over here if you like. I tend not to want to, or not, not to do that because we need to vastly increase the amount of Yang we have to get back in into balance. So what I want to do here is I'm looking here. You can see this is a Yin building. This is a Yang building. And you can tell by the little mark on on here it also says right in there um, you want to make sure 
that you're selecting buildings at least off the start with this faction to try to bring yourself back into balance so i'm gonna build uh, this yang building because i want uh, additional growth and then over here you have the ability to build um, a few different buildings but there are some uh, you can you know reinforce your position here again we want to grow this area up um, quite quite uh, quite a bit so kind of invest some money there getting those built up and then here um, because we just lost a bunch of yang units I actually should um, recruit a few more even though the uh, the peasant archers are extremely cheap for uh, uh, Miao Ying. Now if we look at this faction overall there's really only one major thing you want to pay attention to which is you get increased ammunition for all of your armies so it makes archer units which all bring the yin mechanic with them um, really quite strong and if you fight demons you get increased leadership and you reduce um, corruption as well it's really important um, to keep your corruption down because up in these regions chaos corruption gets really quite high um, and if they ever break through the wall they will uh, cause quite a bit of corruption very quickly. Now, if we go back here, we'll spend these points. Again, I tend to go um, with this. There are just so many factions in the game now with um, with that, and want her to have increased mobility because you've got to move around quite a bit with her at the start. In terms of tech, the tech tree also um, influences your yin and yang stuff. So. As you kind of go here, if you go right down the middle, uh, these tend to not do anything. But as soon as you dip to the top, these are all yang um, harmonies. And then if you go underneath, they're all yin. Improving your archers is really good for this action. So I'm going to research some yin stuff there. Um, I'm hoping to build up my, my yang forces to bring myself back into balance. So we want to try to get in balance as, as uh, early as we can. But... If, uh, if it doesn't happen, it's not that big of a deal. Now, a couple of other things that you want to be aware of with this faction, especially at the beginning, is in terms of who is near you, um, you are by far the strongest group in this region. Um, this group here, the Western Provinces, is down here. Um, they are actually, um, you know, the other Grand Cathay faction. So... They're not too big of a threat. Up this way, though, pretty much everything is quite weak. So you don't have to worry too much about um, this Yo faction that you're at war at, the, the rebel lords. They're very, very weak. Um, you you can kind of you know take over them at your leisure. What I tend to do is I secure this initial province, and then I just beat the crap out of these settlements to level up uh, Miao Ying. She's quite strong when you get her leveled up. Um, if we go look at her um, details here, she gets minus 50% upkeep for missile units, which basically gives her a whole bunch of additional uh, yin. This is an incredibly good um, trait for her army. Missile units are quite strong, um, and it's really good for, uh, for your income early on if you can build up some additional missile units. In terms of the rest of this, I'm actually, normally I don't like to repair these, but I will just for this. And because we've secured this, we, we can actually secure a um, commandment here right away. In terms of commandments, um, lots of these are, are not too big of a deal. There's no uh, real growth one, which is a kind of an uncommon thing for this faction. Um, Usually off the bat, I just tend to take this because we're not in any real concern of, you know, plagues being nearby or, or things like that yet. Uh, eventually, we will probably switch to that, um, but for now, we're we're pretty safe. So while I advance the turn here, we'll talk a little bit about and um, kind of major enemies that you want to watch out for. So. Anything above the wall, so anything to the north of the Snake Gate, is kind of demon factions. Um, there's the uh, Puppets faction uh, up and to the uh, to the east, and then Kolak Sun Eater is actually uh, a little ways up to the 
to the north there, so those two factions can be fairly fairly dangerous. Um, but they're dangerous a little bit later on. Early on, they're not as much of a threat. Um, you know, Nangao is quite a good starting location because you're a little bit a ways, uh, of a ways away from some of these other factions that are quite dangerous. There is also uh, Lokir Fellow, Fellheart, so there's some Dark Elves uh, kind of off to, to the east, and there are some, uh, is Clan Eshin is to the uh, to the south. So you want to be really careful of Clan Eshin because the Skaven can be just a nightmare to, to deal with, honestly. Um, here we're going to upgrade our growth building again, and then the nice thing is, is you can actually reach this immediately. So I actually tend to come over here right away because there's just no very very little downside to, to doing so. We come over there and do that, and I am going to loot and occupy this settlement as well. And we'll bring some more little crappy spearmen along. Um, it's really good to keep fighting, especially against this faction, because they're just so weak to start with. Um, your kind of initial goals are to expand to the south and to the uh, to the east. There's re it's really quite uh, a good place if you can secure these gates as well. Um, the snake gate, I can't remember this one's name, but you just secure the gates. Um, you can really um, do a good job of protecting this area because these gates level up um, to have pretty obscene garrisons. Even off the start, they start with pretty good garrisons. So it's good to uh, to get your hands on those later on. Uh, one other thing here too that's good to get is the earth blood um, thing there, and then this is another good thing as well. So getting some of these early abilities is really um, is a really smart thing to do. I tend to actually um, retreat usually after these first couple turns just to go back and build up a, a little bit more, and you can see. Um, you know, I've brought things a little bit closer into uh, into harmony, but not I'm not quite there yet. So we want to, uh, if I actually look at this closer, all right, I can see that um, if I only train one of these units, I should be in harmony for the next turn. Now let's go through the victory conditions here quickly. The short campaign is all about controlling... Um, this area here. So like Gunpowder Road we already own. Lands of Stone and Steel is uh, right beside. You have the Imperial Road is this direction and then the uh, Central, Western and Eastern Bastions are your gates. So there's the Western, the Eastern and the Central. Those three gates are really really important to Cathay because they just lock chaos out of this entire region and in order to get at you they have to go all the way around um, so controlling those is, is really important the uh, lords that you want to get or the lords we want to kind of eliminate are you want to get rid of the rebels you're going to beat them up lots in the early game um, there are all is also another group down this direction you're not at war with them but they're fighting with the other grand cathay faction i believe um, the Puppets of Misrule are kind of up in this direction. So eventually, like, even though these settlements are, are not good to take, you will actually have to push north of the wall um, to take out the Puppets of Misrule, as well as the Heralds of Tempest. They're over in this direction. Um, there. And then the other ones are the Blessed Dreads. This is Loki or Fel Felhart. Starts over here. And then Clan Eshin, which is, uh, you know, relatively close, right? They're, they're not super far away. Um, so those are factions to watch out for uh, early on. Now, as far as the starting army goes, yeah, these units here, these Jade Warrior Crossbowmen and the Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, are really quite strong. Um, if you fight your battles manually, um, Miao Ying has this ability to transform into a dragon, which is quite good. It's, it's just kind of also like a really fun ability too. So that's a kind of a good... Um, primer to the beginning of, of uh, Miao Ying's campaign. You know, because you start with such a strong position, um, it can be tempting to expand really quickly. Um, don't expand too so fast that you forget to level up your lord. Um, you know, beating on these guys, especially this settlement here, is a really good target to uh, to to just kind of 
you know, beat into the ground because you can level up your, your lord quite a bit um, in the early game. You know, we're on turn two, we're already level four. Um, training a few additional troops, we'd be able to uh, to do that. And you can see our uh, caravan is, is on its way. They're, they're heading off in that direction. So that's kind of all I've got for, uh, for this one. Uh, if you like the content, feel free to leave a comment, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel for more in the future. Thanks for watching.